Oh, hi. Oh, Rich, hi. You must have gotten there early. <sighs> yes, I did. I had to see if there had been any changes. Is he awake? No, not yet. Well, look, I'm going to be over there in a little while. We need to talk, Logan. Ridge, I'm all right. I'm not laying a lot of guilt on myself if that's what you're worried about. I'll see you when I get over there. I'll get it, Maria. Hello, Stephanie. Well, Dr. Hayes, this is an early morning call, isn't it? I know. I'm sorry about that. I was looking for Ridge, and he doesn't seem to be at his house, so I thought he might be here. Oh, was he expecting you? No. I haven't seen him. Maybe he spent the night with Brooke. Well, I don't think so. She spent most of the night at the hospital. Have you spoken with her? No, I was there myself. I had a patient that needed some attention. May I come in? I was just on my way out. Would you like me to leave a note for Ridge? That's all right. Any particular reason you'd like me to tell him you dropped by? Mother, who's there? Taylor. Hi, Ridge. Well, now, this is a surprise. Yes, it is. Well, come on in. Good morning. Hello, doctor. Still asleep, I see. Yes. Did he wake up at all last night since I left? Yes, we had to give him some pain medication. That's why he's still out. Was it for the headache? It's not that uncommon, Mrs. Forrester. I'm sure the pain will start to ease today. Well, what about his eyesight? That could come back today, too. Really? He may even be able to see when he wakes up. I had the radiologist take a look at his x-rays. There was trauma to the optic nerve, but the damage wasn't very extensive. I still think your husband should come out of this just fine. Oh, oh God, Doctor, you just made my day. Mm. You're up. Great. Got some breakfast. <laughs> Looks like you got dinner. Uh, I've got that too. Croissants, strawberries, and of course, the mandatory spring bouquet of flowers to the lady. Oh, Jake. Oh, they're lovely. Oh, they're so bright and fresh. Just like you. I say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what is the occasion for all this merriment? We are going to have the perfect day. We are? Yes, we are. First, we're going to have a little continental breakfast, and then we're going to go to the beach. The beach? Yes. When was the last time you went surfing? Surfing? Yeah, I got this friend down in Zuma. He's got the boards, wetsuit, the works. I'll show you how it's done. Uh-huh. So you're like the big kahuna, right? Yeah. Well, I've, I've been on some of the waves. Uh-huh. Riding them or having them ride you? This is going to be great. I'm telling you. We're going to have a little picnic on the beach, and you, my lady, are going to forget about everything today. Everything but us. And how happy you and I can make each other.
the bold and the beautiful. This portion is sponsored by the makers of Advil Cold and Sinus, advanced formula for the cold season. Look at this. I even got some fancy coffee from one of those stands. Well, my, my. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Here, grab a chair. Actually, what I'm going to have to grab is a rain check. What? I have an appointment with my attorney. When? In about half an hour. <sighs> I'm sorry. When's the appointment over? It may take a while. Well, that's all right. I'll wait. You will? Look, I want this day to be different. Fun. Okay? You deserve it. You need to take a break from all this. You go to your appointment and then get right back here. For surfing. For surfing. Skydiving, whatever. Tell you what. I have something really special for you. You are special, Jake McLean. I don't know how to thank you. Don't even try. You're here to see Mother? No, I'm here to see you. Oh, sorry about that, Mother. Oh, that's all right. I was just leaving. Are you going to go to the hospital later? Yeah, I'll be there. Good. I'll tell Brooke when I see her at the office. I'm on my way there now. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Stephanie. She never misses an opportunity to zing it to me. Yeah, well, that is Mother. Yeah, I know. I know that she would like me right out of your life. And that's her problem, though, isn't it? Well, anyway, you got me curious. What brings you by here? Mm. Eric? Brooke. Good morning. Hi. How are you feeling, Mr. Forrester? My headache is gone. That's good. What about your eyesight? No. Excuse me, Mrs. Forrester. Let me take a look here. Eric, are you seeing any shapes or colors? Brightness? No, Doctor. So it's pretty much the same as it was yesterday? Yes, you could say that. Eric, you just woke up. Give it a little time. Your wife is right. You may very well see some improvement through the day. You mean that? Doctor, you're not just saying that. Yes, of course he means it, Eric. There is going to be some improvement. Isn't that what you told me, Dr. Payton? What I told Mrs. Forrester was that the optic nerve wasn't damaged as we thought it might have been. And given that, yes, there's a very good chance that we'll start to see some progress. Now, I want you to tell me if this makes any difference. Do that again, Doctor. Yes. Yes, I can definitely sense something. Oh, Eric. This is very good. Wait, do that again. Okay. Yes, Doctor, I can't see any specific shapes, but I do, I do see a brightness. Good. I'd like to take you downstairs a little later for some further testing. Doctor, does that mean that, I mean, is, is it possible? Brooke, that... let's, uh, let's not push it. There's definite progress, Mrs. Forrester. He's moving in the right direction. Eric, I'll talk to you a little later. Yes, yes, thank you, Doctor. No, Dad, don't worry about it. I'll take care of everything. Are you sure you're gonna be okay? Yeah, well, I'll stop by the hospital later. I, I hope you're out of there by then, too. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Damn. I was just coming here to tell you about this. Have you seen him? 
Yes, I was there last night. And it, it's just a mild concussion, nothing else. What did he say to you? Is there more? Well, I, I haven't been over to see him today. Uh, come on, Mother, what is it? I want to know. As of last night, there was a problem with his vision. With his vision? Was it blurred or what? Well, obviously, he didn't want you to be concerned about it. So in all probability, it went away overnight. He, he seemed pretty confident that he was going to get out of there soon. I'm sure he's going to be fine. And one thing I know, he's counting on you taking care of everything over here for him. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. I've been spending most nights here anyway. Oh, you're not seeing Macy, I take it. No, I've seen her. When? The other day. Over at Jake's place. Margo. Are you alone? Yeah. Good, because we need to talk. What about? What you told me yesterday about Sally. What she asked you to do, Jake. I need some answers. Did you or didn't you spy for Sally when you were working at Forrester? To tell you the truth, I'm a little surprised myself I came by. So why did you? Well, when I saw you at the hospital yesterday, you were kind of at loose ends, and you looked like you needed someone to talk to. Yeah, I do. I guess I'm feeling partly responsible for what happened to Dad. Is that going to make him get better any faster? No. Is it going to help you in any way? No. What about Brooke? Will it help her? Of course not. You can see where I'm heading. Feeling guilty isn't going to help anyone. Why waste energy on it? You've got it. Okay, thanks, Doc. I'll keep that in mind. Now, I did want to ask you about something else. Yeah, what's that? You had mentioned being very impressed by seeing your father, Brooke, and the baby, and the way they related to each other as a family. And I asked you how you felt about that. But you didn't get a chance to answer me. It's causing me some conflict. About your feelings for Brooke? About my feelings for Dad. Would you mind explaining that to me? When I was over there the other night, watching the three of them together. I mean, Dad's such an incredible parent. He, I guess it's because he's had so much practice at it. But to watch him relating to his son and to Brooke, you know, he's the king of that house. He's so in control. He draws out his son, draws out Brooke. His son loves it, too. So does Brooke. It means so much to Dad. I guess what I'm trying to say is they're really a family when they're together like that. They really are. So what are you going to do about that? What am I going to do about it? Taylor Brooks, the one that doesn't want that marriage. Are you absolutely certain of that? You went to Jake's apartment to see Macy? Yes, Mother, I did. I realize it's very difficult for you to accept her involvement. Look, I don't even want to discuss this. In my opinion, Macy didn't steal the formula, and she didn't take it to Spectra. Then who did, Thorn? You know, Margot, that really gets me that you'd come over here and ask me that question. Jake, I'm not accusing you of anything. The hell you're not accusing me? What do you expect me to think? You tell me that while you're working at Forrester, Sally comes to you and asked you to steal secrets from us. Why didn't you come to me? I just didn't. Oh, Jake, why? Why? You know how I feel about Macy. I am not going to let her mother get in trouble with the Foresters. <sighs> OK. What did you say to Sally when she asked you to do this? It is irrelevant what I told her. No! 
no, it's not. It isn't irrelevant at all, because after that happened, someone did steal a secret. A very costly secret. Now, you swear it wasn't Macy. Well, if it wasn't Macy, who was it? It must have been me, right? <sighs> Jake, no. No, that is not what I'm saying. But if it wasn't Macy, it was someone. And if people start looking for that someone and they hear about your conversation with Sally, <sighs> Jake, have you told anyone else? No. Well, don't. For God's sakes, don't. Listen, I, I have to get to work. Margot. Never did say. Do you think I stole the formula from Forrester? No. Of course not. Open. Well, at least your appetite hasn't left you. Brooke, I feel fine. I really do. And you're going to be fine, Eric. I know I am. I don't want you worrying about me, all right? Now, who said I was worrying? The nurse told me you were here the better part of the night. Well, that doesn't mean I was worrying. Well, and that you were back here early this morning, even before I woke up? What am I supposed to think? I'm concerned, Eric. I'm telling you, you don't have to be. Well, I won't be as soon as you're back to normal. Not that I don't appreciate it. I appreciate a few things about you, too. So, how was the baby last night? Well, he was so exhausted from all the excitement that he fell right to sleep. Well, I just hope he's not too upset when he wakes up this morning and finds neither one of us there. Well, somehow, I don't think that problem is as significant today. No, it doesn't seem like it does. Eric, when I think of what you did... Brooke, he's our son. I wasn't about to let him get hurt. Hurt. He could have been killed when that display case fell on him. Well, it didn't. And we can both thank God for that. We can thank God for you. That was clearly your finest moment, Eric. And I'll never forget it for as long as I live. The way you dove under that falling piece of furniture and pushed him out of the way. Our child is alive today because of you. Only because of you.
Due to NCAA basketball coverage, The Bold and the Beautiful will not be seen tomorrow or Friday, but will return Monday at its regularly scheduled time.